Welcome back to another American Goulash episode. This is another video podcast. I just realized that I erased everything from an SD card. And what was on that SD card? A material for a vlog. So one second of silence for those videos. Hello, darkness, my okay, one second passed. Let's dive into this. This episode is the third one, the latest and the last one of this collaboration with uh, James Rabbit from the, the Fear of the Craft Beer Planet podcast channel. Go over and, and subscribe, you can find it on a lot of uh, podcast apps. I promise I will post something on Wednesday too. I don't care if I lost my vlog, I, I don't know. I will find something to, to share. But you guys are here for the video, so let's get into this. So we were talking about those uh, vinyls and uh, mm -hmm. the look of the vinyls. Now my next, the next beer is is the, my my one of the favorites. The design is just killing. Right. Now I honestly, I have never heard of Pipeworks Brewing Company. I'm sorry, the nice people, Pipeworks. It sounds great. <clears throat> this cover is fed cover. This beer art <laughs> is awesome. He is not kidding. I don't know how well the camera's getting it, but amazing. Oh, it's beautiful. It's called Blood of the Unicorn Hoppy Red Ale. Now, I've never heard of a Hoppy Red Ale. We had a guy on our show that loves red ales. That was his whole thing. Uh -huh. Our buddy Ryan. He loves Ryan. He loves him. He always wanted to bring a red ale on the show. Well, there you go. And here's a red ale. <laughs> Ryan Harb, this is for you, buddy. Right from, from Chicago. <laughs> from Chicago, really? Is that where they're from? Yeah. Now, how did you how did you learn about this Chicago beer? How long, do you know if they've been around long in this area? Uh, basically, this was the same as you chose your vinyls back in the day. Okay. I went in, and if you have that heavy metal blood in you, like, Look yes. at that unicorn. You want to pick that out. I wanted to drink this beer and and I, I never heard about the Pipeworks either. Me either. This is like I chose beers that I never drank before. Right. So I never had this before. It's uh... Oh, so you, oh this is completely out of the blue for you too. Yeah. yeah. You had heard of them, I, I you saw heard. the cover and went, cover. Oh wow, that's funny. You saw the beer can artwork and said, I'm in. It's one pint of 6.5% alcohol and mm. I was in and I never had it but it's 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 a new step up it's it's not like a even the font even everything like you, you cannot complain if yeah they're if you're like a, a rebel young guy you, you pick this up if you're like a, a chill classy one you will never drink this right but if you're like a heavy metal guy and whatever rebel you will, will I don't know. And anyway, it looks great. Who are those chill, classy people that are drinking beer again? What weirdos are classy and drink beer? <laughs> I know what you mean. The beer snobs. Yeah, beer snobs are not buying a can like that. I don't think. Yeah. Well, maybe they are. We're not beer snobs. That's why it's hard to tell what beer snobs do. You're definitely not a beer snob, by the way. My buddies, not beer snobs. <laughs> I mean, I know beer snobs. So you would pick up a beer like this even in the in the podcast. That's, I, I, we have a, we don't have real segments, but we do a thing called Richard's Random Pick. That's my nickname on the show, Richard. So, okay. Richard's Random Pick is whatever I look up, like you did. I just look and go, mm. Now, sometimes it fails me. I picked up a, a barrel-aged cream ale <laughs> from Canada. Oh. No. That one didn't work out so well. That one did not work out so well. That the barrel age, turns out you can't barrel age a cream ale and make it taste good. From Canada, I actually did the same exact thing that we're doing right now. Right. Just without the camera, without the microphone. Sure. And I did it with my my father, and we had a lot of crazy beers. It, and that's that's the first, that was the first part when I had like a, a weed beer. Right. I love it's you. like it's 
it has no drug in it or like THC or uh, you're not getting high of high of it, but it has like the the, the flavor is is like marijuana mar marijuana flavor. Oh, nice. That's Ma marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let, let's get a little conspiracy theory here for a minute. Well, here I'm gonna hand this to you. I'm gonna let you pour while we go over conspiracy theories. I think the THC gets kicked out when you in the boiling process because it's not mm -hmm. water soluble. You don't get high from it, but it's you know. Here's the conspiracy. You have hops, you have regular old marijuana, and you have hemp. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody knows that pot and hemp are cousins, except hemp doesn't get you high. Mm -hmm. Still illegal in this country, right? You can import it, but you can't grow it. Mm -hmm. Do you notice that hops have been legal the entire time, and yet they're also a non-psychoactive you know, cousin to marijuana? But somehow they've stayed legal. Something about that liquor lobby that's pushing real hard. Because by all rights, hops Which one is more illegal. expensive? I think the story, and don't quote me, goes back, and we could look on our phones and be intelligent, but it goes back all the way to 20s and the paper people, and they didn't mm -hmm. want to switch to hemp paper, and they put out a bunch of racist things about black people raping white women and smoking weed. It was all nonsense. Mm -hmm. It was all nonsense. But for years, that's gone on. Meanwhile, guess what? Hops still legal. I'm, I'm glad. Cousins. Oh, I'm glad we, too. We, we couldn't do this review without We could not do this so. review without it. But that, Give me those glasses. <laughs> yes, but that's a thing. That's actually a thing now. <clears throat> weed beer. That's, especially with all the states that are converting to legality. They're trying to put weed in beer. Now, no offense to New Belgium, but I haven't heard the best reviews on it. And New Belgium's a great brewery, but... Yeah, I like them. Apparently, there's a reason why you this use mine, I guess. Well, in fairness... Oh, that was cute. Oh, okay. <laughs> in fairness... Um, you know, there's a, I can't even tell you how many different hop varietals there are. There's tons of them, right? I mean, I can think of four or five off the top of my head. There's probably um, 20, 30. <laughs> yep. Just same thing with marijuana. There's all these different strains. There's all these different strains of hops, too. So maybe just somebody has to find the right marijuana strain to use as hops to make it make a good beer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's so new. You know, in this country, that's... It wasn't too bad. It, it had like a, a huge leaf on it. Right. And uh, I... Do you remember who the... Who it was? No, I have pictures. I can show you later. And, the, and there are other companies that have tried it. They're not the first one. If I if I if I will find the the picture, I'll put the picture right here. Now my, my show doesn't use video, so we'd have to fade in the audio. <laughs> so till now, this color is this looks like a beer I always drink. It looks like a lager, right? It's got yeah, that it lager looks like the, the lager. What is it? I didn't read what it was. We should talk about what it is. We talked about that beautiful art, but... Well, it's Hoppy Red Ale. Oh, Hoppy Red Ale. We did talk about that. Wow. I might have drank it. I thought it's, it's going to be like pink. Yeah. Because the unicorns have unicorns have pink blood. They but... do. Is that true? They do. They do. I don't know. Cheers. I think they do. I'm going to ask you, especially because this next beer we're going to get, give me four five metal albums you think everybody needs to own and i don't care if they're american they could be anybody any language any anything five heavy metal records of any metal variety that you think everybody should own now you're killing with this question i will explain you why it's very hard because um because whenever I, I was back in in, the, in romania we were the real pirates with music and uh, as usually we were we got the best songs from every every single heavy metal band and um, give me five, even five bands you think people have to be attached to. You can do it either way. You want me to go first? I can, I'm pretty good. I, I, do you want me to go in, in order or just no? Random? Like five, yeah. five, five heavy metal bands or five, yeah. five metal bands. Five metal bands because I don't think there's a greatest. By the way, that's that's a sports thing. You can't actually quantify music to say any one band is the greatest or any musician is the greatest at this. They're just incredibly talented or very innovative. Okay, I will, I will start with Queen. Fantastic. The Queen movie is coming up. I cannot wait. I am such a huge Queen fan. I'll go with Scorpions. Okay, very nice. Shanker's a brilliant guitar player, absolutely. Well, Metallica. Oh, 100%. Of course. If My Desert Island 25 includes And Justice For All. I mean, I mean, it includes Master of Puppets. Master of Puppets, to me, is a perfect record. I like Injustice for All, but Master of Puppets is a perfect record. The last Cliff Burton record, brilliant. I can play Master of Puppets on the guitar. Get the hell out of here, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, I we would like to see that. We used to play uh, a couple. Uh, we played the From Whom the Bell Tolls. Uh, when I saw that live, 
at Orion and I could feel like that 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 beginning, you know, you just feel that boom. Oh, it's so oh, it's so I love it. <coughs> love it. You ever heard about uh now two two bands, I will not put them in this this order or this top five. Okay. But two bands that I have to I I, I wanna know if you ever heard about them. Halloween. No. Halloween? It's Halloween. It's played like Hell Halloween. Yes, Halloween. No. It's like Tobias Summit is the lead singer. Okay. And there are like really, really great metal ballads. I will show you okay. a couple of songs after this. Nice. And uh, they are as great as, as like Scorpions, but Scorpion had a, had a break with the German German era when the wall was broken off and bro broken or whatever. I don't agree. Yeah, the wall was yep. And that's why Scorpion got really high. But. And actually, Scorpions got uh, uh, famous because. Uh, Wait, they were shut just... up. <laughs> hey, people, we're podcasting. So when there was like a communism still in uh, back in Hungary, a great band. It's called Omega. Okay. They couldn't leave the country f to be to get international, and they right. gave it the Wild Dove. That's a Hungarian song of a, of a girl with with pearl hair, pearl, ah. curly hair. Nice. And they gave give they they gave them the permission, and that was. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm like 80% right, but that gave them the breakthrough to the to the real metal life, metal metal. Right, uh, they can open up the community, right? And, and yeah, so Scorpions is there. Uh, I cannot skip on the on the other question. Like, yeah, okay, back to you, back to the two. Sure. Halloween. Do you ever heard? You ever heard about Man of War? Man of War. Man of War. Yes. It's a New York City based heavy metal band. Right. They are all dressed up in like leather, and yes. they are the fighters, and um, and I don't know why, but they are famous in Europe. And I I talked to a couple couple metalheads and and people from from here, and they never heard about them. <coughs> Where's my beer? Where's my beer? Oh, there you go. So you were saying like unicorn? <laughs> so like unicorns, yeah. And then so. What did I so hear? Man of War, n not big in America, but they found an audience in Europe. You said, yeah, they're they're huge and, and they're the gathering. We forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we Hi, <laughs> we're professional broadcasters. <laughs> well, I don't know where you know. Yeah, I may as well break something. It's just a matter of that. So they found an audience in Europe, which is huge, and they're playing for thousands because of the. Their style is really close to the Scandinavian uh, Vikings and oh. the, the warrior, and and the, you have the warrior blood in you, and and it's it's so Europeans love it. Some of that European metal is angry, really, and I don't mean in a bad way. I mean it's aggressive angry. I mean it's. I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it in the best way possible. Yeah, well, well, I never know any of the bands, and friends will go, "Do you know Norway's blah blah blah?" My absolute favorite, which I was, we were, we were, uh, I, I read all the books, it's uh, uh, Mick Wall uh, wrote a book about the world's most aggressive band, and it was about the Guns N' Roses. Okay. So. I love Guns N' Roses. I listened to every single song, I mean that's obvious, but I, I almost owned all the vinyls, it's just catchy every single song is and the reason why I really like them is uh, is not just because of the songs they were like personality gods yeah every single person in the freaking band what had his own style own personality and that's what made a good band it's not like you see now there's these uh, kids they all have like hair like iron down and they have like tattoos all over their neck and the whole freaking band is like five guys and they're like a 15 bands or 1500 bands and the, everybody looks the same. Yep. Back in the day, like okay, there was like LA Guns. He was actually wearing the, the I think the guitarist from the LA Guns was wearing the cylinder first. And Slash said, okay, I'll put the shit out of him because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the guy with the cylinder right now. And, uh, and yeah, of course, um, I want to mention I would drop. I'm this 80s, 90s uh, metal kid, but uh, I would drop ACDC uh, for for Iron Maiden, one of the biggest heavy metal bands 
ever. Right now, Metallica is, is the biggest one. Our lists are startlingly similar. Startlingly That's similar. That's good. There's like a, a small 20 year old difference between you and me. Right. But because uh, uh, Romania is like 60 years back in time. <laughs> <laughs> I got the same same uh, music style as you. So you guys are still watching Doogie Howser over there and all these other 80s shows? You know what? <laughs> Even in, the, in like in the TV, you can even see the you can even watch the Married with Kids. No, Married with Children. Married with Children. I love that show too. <laughs> like like you go home and they're actually playing sometimes. Oh, that's crazy. But I, I love it. Oh, I love it too. But what is your top five? Okay, this is easy and very similar. I'm going to take Queen because I think as much as you can base the pillar of metal on Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin and uh, Black Sabbath. Queen almost personified what would become glam. You know what I mean? They were hard, they were heavy, they were slightly progressive, they all had their individual styles, they were all top shelf musicians at their job, and they were great. Queen, brilliant. Two, obviously Metallica. We both took Metallica. <clears throat> I can't say enough awesomeness about a Metallica. Even the records I'm not the biggest fan of. Like the, the table? Or what was that? Saint Anger? No, there was uh, a new song from Metallica. They they recorded a song with a, a metal god, and they, the the whole lyrics are like, "Here is a table, the table." I don't think I know the song. Thank God, I'm going to be glad I don't know that song because already you're, that's crazy. I am going to give you a bit of an interesting thing because also Guns N' Roses on mine. I have a friend named Dan Jost, who was the guitar player, the last live guitar player in Atlantic City for years. He, were, he was part of a band called the Almost Angels, which were like a Pussycat Dolls as a cover band, a bunch of girls in lingerie singing pop tunes, and two musicians, a percussionist drummer who rapped, and this guitar player. I'm going to see a group of girls dressed in lingerie, but for some reason, I'm watching the guitar player. Does that tell you something? He's, he made Rihanna songs sound good. You know, he's brilliant. He's an amazing singer. He hates when I do this to him. He's an amazing guitar player and a brilliant singer. Anyway, we're walking one day. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. And he goes, uh, we're just talking about music and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, you know, my, my, my uncle Mike was involved with Appetite for Destruction. He mixed it. He was one of the guys who mixed it. And I'm like, what? Your uncle Mike, quote unquote, family friend, is Michael Barbiero? He's like, yeah, now I'm a geek. I'm an audio engineer by trade, so I love all that techie studio stuff. Uh -huh. And Michael Barbier, if you don't know, is also the guy who mixed the very controversial And Justice For All by Metallica, where there's no bass in the mix and it's a very uh -huh. odd mix. So I got to meet Michael Barbiero from my buddy, who's this brilliant guitar player. And it, you know, it's just a neat thing to happen one day for somebody to walk around and go, you know, how you'd never know who knows who, you know, in that world. So well, Guns N' Roses, that's three. You you were you were born in the when when you had to see all of these big metal bands yeah. in their in their shining. Like when they were shining. And right. Slayer and when, Anthrax and when uh when I uh Testament. I started to to really like Guns N' Roses, I got actually upset because because it was like a, a dream for me to see them live. Pretty sure it was like two years ago when I went to Guns N' Roses. And my, my friend was filming and it was camera on the stage and he was just filming everything. He turns back and he's like, why are you crying? I'm like, you have no idea how good is this for me. Like, this was this was one of my biggest dreams to see Guns N' Roses. And and I was there, it was it was amazing. It was in Philly and... Uh, I've never seen Guns N' Roses. But I did in college write a paper on Appetite for Destruction, how they were actually the first grunge band. So let me take you through the logic. And it's got to be vaguely musical technical in a weird way, but if you look at all those 80, 80s glam metal bands, uh, Poison, Motley Crue, Cinderella, any of those bands, right? They all had those pointy guitars, right? Okay. And high hair, you know, everybody sprayed the hair, you okay. know, they like they're wearing makeup, they're all half chicks. You know, like the glam thing gone too yes. far. And even the drummers all had the same drum set, like two bass drums, two toms, and the high chines. And the, it was a whole, a whole, like we talked about a look, cookie cutter look. And then Guns N' Roses hit the scene and they looked more like Zeppelin. You know, the guitar slung low and he was playing Les Pauls and not pointing guitars. And they were writing like real 
more organic music and everything, even if you listen to the mix, I, I talked about this, Michael Barbero of, of Appetite for Destruction, it's not so 80s. So it was the manliness in the hair? Yes. Now, talking about this, one of my favorite, favorite bands nowadays, for the past three years, but they are, they are new. Okay. Steel Panther. Yep. Oh my God! I had a friend at my old, at my radio work. My buddy Matt got me, and Matt Murray, who does the morning show over there, he got me into them. What a cool band, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just they're they're and goofy, but you good. know what? I went to a Steel Panther concert uh, in DC, and it was like 300 people. Right. And in Europe, they're playing for like 3,000, no, 10,000 people, and it's like there are there are videos you can see that. It's a huge freaking stage and a lot of thousands of people. And even that, that some of the people in America, they have no idea about them. Let's circle back to this, because Europe has an amazing tradition going all the way back to the 40s and 50s with black jazz artists and you know black blues musicians moving to Europe because in Europe, people respected them. Um, one of my favorite drummers is a gentleman named Billy Cobb. And if nobody knows who he is, the closest you're gonna know is a band called Mahabhi Beach Orchestra, it doesn't matter, he's a sick drummer from the late 60s, early 70s. Mm -hmm. He moved to Europe in the 70s, because he said, I can work one third of the time and make five times the money. Because European audiences respect music and actually buy and listen to music according to their tastes, not according to trends. That's and I'm like, wow. That was the period when almost everybody moved here. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I mean, you needed to be in America. It's still some of that in, that in the music scene. If you really want to break, you got to break in America. There's a funk band called Jamaica. Yeah, you have to break in America, then yeah. you want you, you will have the audience in Europe or Japan. Right. Or oh, Japan's also the same thing, right. Do you, uh, do you know, are you, you into funk and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Do you ever heard of a band called Jamiroquai? Uh, no. Jamiroquai, okay, that's, that's fine. Jamiroquai is an awesome band, right? Now in Europe, uh, you remember the, the uh, what was it, the Live 8 that happened? Sure. They headlined Paris Live 8. They sell out Wembley. They couldn't wow. sell out the House of Blues in Atlantic City. <laughs> so they sell out Wembley Stadium in England, but can't sell out the House of Blues for eight or 900 people here. They, uh, he joked in Rolling Stone. Wow. He's like, I can't get arrested in America. <laughs> But they're that's, a great that's, band. That's, Everybody that's really crazy, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter the genre. I mean, it's just Europe and Japan both have a much, at their core, appreciation for music where in America, it, I feel it's a style or a trend. There's so much of that that happens. Not for the pop, though. What's that? Not for the pop, though. Oh, for the pop, too. It's a trend. But there are, like, you're selling out, there are arenas Selling oh. out for, for pop, like Beyonce, oh, Ryan, oh, Taylor, yeah. Taylor, Taylor Swift and everything. Oh, you're for, right, yes. For like more underground-ish music and let, I'll put, I'll put heavy metal like somewhere there. Sure. It's, it's not the same audience in here. It's right. like, probably, prob like in here, as I said, Steel Panther just sells out for 800 people. Meanwhile, in, in Europe, it's like thousands, but Taylor Swift goes there. Taylor Swift goes in Europe, he has a full house, but then right. Steel Panther goes there and he has a full house too. But they, they have, sorry, Taylor Swift, she has a full house. I know Dream. I was with <laughs> you, I let it slide. I think she's Third good man. too. So we got Metallica, I agree with you. We got Queen, I Queen. agree with you. Guns N' Roses, Guns N Roses, I agree with you. Um, a band we're gonna get to next that you put on your list also, Iron Man, I gotta go with you. I spent so much time with Number of the Beast and uh, uh, anything Iron Maiden. They were just such a... You know what it is? I started off a Kiss fan. In eighth grade, I was a big guy in a Kiss. And then, my buddy's friend, my you buddy... You used to play uh, Party All Night or Rock... Rock and Roll Night? Rock rock and roll. Right. right. Okay. And I mean, you know, for a kid, Kiss made a lot of sense. You know, the makeup and the thing and the songs were easy to digest. I was a young drummer. I could play the music. It all made sense. When eighth grade, my... Buddy's brother sits us down in a very smoky, weird smelling room, kind of smelled like hops. And uh, he puts on Rush's 2112. I don't know if you're a Rush fan or not, but. I don't know. Uh, Rush 2112. I sat that down. I'm a young drummer, and I heard that craziness, and I didn't know what to think of it. I'm, it was like alien music to me. It was so 
off the charts, you know? And they influenced both Maiden and Metallica in a big way. Okay. Both those bands remind me of Rush, you know? So, in some level. Heavier, but same press. Yes. So, I am walking home. This is synchronicity at its best. I look down, like right in front of my house, there's a puddle, and there's an album, a cassette in the puddle, and it's a Rush called All the World's a Stage. It's the live album tour from 2112. Okay. And the only thing it played was 2112, Lakeside Park, and the drum solo on the other side. It's a working man. And it's a drummer, now I got it. I put that drum solo on, and I'm like, oh, I get this band now. <laughs> Amazing. They're heavy, but proggy, but melodic. The lyrics are enticing. They're a band that always followed to their own thing, just like Metallica. They didn't have radio airplay or made, uh -huh. they made their they made their bones on playing live and developing a following. So there's gonna be my fifth band. I gotta take Rush. Because they're just past the they didn't take the full split the metal, but they also didn't take the full split the prog. You know, they sit right in the middle. And you get both sides of the mm -hmm. point like them. Okay, yes fans right. like them, Metallica fans like them. So basically, we we had a couple, couple similar bands, yeah. and um, and I know you are chit chatting with uh, with uh, Mr. James Hatfield a lot, but but what a cool dude! <laughs> he really was a cool dude. Uh, but let's 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 taste a bit of Iron Maiden now. Let's do it. Um, you know, your Steel Panther, by the way, is my darkness. Do you know the darkness? <laughs> the darkness. You don't know the darkness. Uh, when we're done, we got. I gotta hit you to the darkness. <laughs> You'll fill some in. They're so brothers. It's Halloween and darkness. The darkness were the first band that reminded me of Queen, and okay. they're brothers that both play guitar. And the one sings. He's got the high Freddie voice. They've got. They, okay. they remind me of Queen. So our sixth beer is is a beer from England. It is. And we're allowed to drink farm beers. It's great. It's uh, created by Iron Maiden, and it's yes. called a Trooper. I actually have seen a lot of my friends from England, they were drinking this. And I always be like, damn it, I want to taste that. Yeah. And now, now it's here. It's, it, we, we found it in, in next to Atlantic City and... Uh, I've never heard of this. I can't believe that I didn't know Iron Maiden had a beer. It's by Robinson's. That must be some Cheshire England, yeah. Metallica should, should do a beer too. Oh, that'd be killer. Oh, wait. Oh, it's definitely British too, because you can see it's the O-U-R. Flavor. Now I learned a lot uh, when I was in school. Uh, we learned British English in, in the high school. Really? Like not just the high school, but everywhere. Huh? Like, for twelve years they taught me British English, and like the color, I spelled with O U. Flavor, I, I spelled with O U. Do you go to hospital and do you go to college? You gonna go to the college or the hospital? No. Uh, I go to the hospital. Okay, that's good, because I, I listen to a lot of British stuff, and that's what they say. They go, and he went to hospital. And I'm like, you're forgetting the dinner. Go to the dinner. <laughs> now, when I'm talking stuff, what, um, <laughs> this was mine. Yeah, it was yours. Yep. But hold it. Oh, that's important, yeah. Uh, so when I'm talking, um, I, the talking part, I picked it up from here and from movies and Cartoon Network, we had we had Cartoon Network. So mostly mostly I'm not trying to to go with the British accent. Right. I'm sticking with the Hungarian accent. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta ask this by the way, because it's come up a couple times and I haven't figured it out. Is there a Hungarian Romanian connection? Sort of like Austrians and Germans or something? Because No, we have the same borders. That's all it is. The border. Well, so yeah, not, there's like, not a cultural. No, uh, back, there? In, back in the day, but this this gonna go politically away. Um, I I don't like to talk about religion, politics, and money. So it's a political connection, not a cultural. Uh, so back in the not the culture. Romanian is a Latin language. Uh, Hungarian is um is a uh, it's called uh, Finugor, and it's uh, connected with the Finns and Hungarians. Hungarians uh, back in the time were like a nomade. No right. culture, and they moved from from uh, Asia to to the uh, now known uh, uh, Car inside the Carpathian that that are the Transylvania, and then uh, there was like an uh, Austrian Hungarian monarchy, right? And uh, that was the huge Hungary, and um, 
even uh, back a hundred years ago there was like a, a big Hungary on the maps and um, Hungary was coll collaborating with uh, with Germany right during the Second World War right and uh, now that's why that's why we are a lot of Hungarians inside of Romania for Transylvanians these two cultures just meshed up because we we eat like stuffed cabbage which is Romanian or polenta polenta soup like you, you uh, make the polenta and put it in milk and you eat it like that and it's I can there, there are a lot of foods Romanian and Hungarian we're just combining so this is why I'm talking Romanian and Hungarian in the mother tongue way because right. I was born there and they it was mandatory in the school to learn Hungarian and Romanian that's brilliant I love that so we had we had like a lot of hours and then I went to, to like uh, English school and they tried to teach me English and I was the worst in my class but probably not because I live in America I, I, I don't know I probably I'm not saying anything. <laughs> That's fine. I, I, I'll keep it out of politics, but I, I only reason I find this whole thing fascinating, first of all, because of, oh, cheerio. That's beer. This is delicious, by the way. The Brits definitely know their way around some beer. Um, I, I, uh, I read a lot about Patton, General Patton, if you know who Patton is, World War II. Uh -huh. Patton, obviously, there's a, there's a myth that Patton, at the end of the war, wanted to fight Russia. He wanted to go invade Russia. And that's not true. What Patton wanted to do was do what we promised, which was keep Europe free, not just Western Europe, but Eastern Europe, Romania, Hungary, Czechoslovakia. He didn't want to give them to the Russians. Mm -hmm. He thought, we promised Europe you'd be free of communism, and then we didn't hold our deal. We didn't hold our promise. So, apparently we're bad people in America. That's, that's the gist of this. We're terrible people. We're sorry about the communism. We're, I'm apologizing for America. <laughs> you knew that actually, in 90, Guns N' Roses was not doing their tour in Europe because of the Romanian communism wars. Really? They were like an empathy or something like that. Really? So they said, okay, we're not going on tour. Huh. Because I was like, right. stop it now. You were the, <laughs> do you see what I just did? That's on camera. <laughs> I just poured my own beer on myself trying to, cut, trying to give you a little clap there. At least it's, uh, it's Iron Maiden beer, so... It's Iron Maiden beer, it's meant to be on me. So you're just taking a bath in Iron Maiden. I could do that. By the way, I don't know if this makes sense, this drinks British. I just have a friend of the family that loves British beers, Hardee's and all these different British beers. It's got a... It's a Britishy taste makes sense? What do you think about the aftertaste? That... That's that brandy thing we talked about. It's not so boozy, but it's got a fortified wine almost bite to it. Like a like a like a barley wine or a so in in, in Hungary in Hungary we have a uh, okay I, I talk about Hungary well, I love it I don't know anything about Hungary so yeah in, in, in Hungary you have a wine it's called uh, uh, it's an it's an it's an also I would not say the whole whole uh, name of it it's also that's how they they really call it and it's uh, made of out of uh, how you call the dried grapes dried grapes yeah raisins. Yes, so it's, it's oh, no, to, a, yeah. like raisin, oh. and they, they pick it up and it's like sweet, and it has like a, a sweet, uh, not sugary, but like, I don't even know, uh, glu glucose. Okay. It's like a glucose taste. Okay. And this has the same as that, that one, like, it's not sugary, but it's like an aftertaste, like. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to backtrack here. Every wine snob I know has now twice wanted to throw a rock at your head. Because first of all, you said black currant wine, and if it's not made from grapes, wine snobs in America don't want to care about it. Yeah. Which is dumb, I don't get it, because all these other fruits can, can make delicious wine, but wine snobs, it's grapes. It's white grapes, it's red grapes, that's what it is. But they, they put, in some of the wines they put them in blueberry. Well, of course people do smart things with wine, but that's the problem in America. We're a bunch of weirdo snobs. We have these weird preconceptions about things and then we don't want to try anything. That, but like, this wine you're talking to sound delicious. If I went to my wine friends and said, hey, I got this wine made out of raisins and it's got a, they'd be like, Dip, not gonna happen. I'm not drinking that swill. What are you, that, that's, that's gotta be garbage. Or your your parents' wine thing. They wouldn't call that wine. Yeah. They'd call that some kind of weird how, how black would they curd call juice. It? Juice? Yeah, it'd be like alcoholic juice to them. It's wine. I'm with you. It's wine, but wine snobs don't see that. It's right out of the French tradition. You know what I mean? That's what they think. Well, of. let's say it's 
beer is called beer because the way you you make it or a liquor is is the way not the liquor like let's say cognac right as is cognac because you're 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 making an alcoholic uh, beverage of of grapes but you're actually uh, the procedure how it's made right and that's why it's cognac Right, and every single thing, like every single alcoholic beverage, has its category. Now, if I'm making, if I'm making a wine, because actually I went to a wine festival and I tasted jalapeno wine. Ha ha Did you like it? No, me either. It I was tried sour it and hot. Right, but it was it was made the same way as a grape wine. Right. So I, I I'm I I'm not getting it. If if I'm making the same way, why can I? I can just name it wine and I'll make the brand and if it kicks in, it kicks in, if it's not... It's if not. you could do that, you'd figure out the goofy culture in America. And since nobody can figure out why we're so weird and have these weird preconceptions... <laughs> but sure we do, and a lot of things. Again, it goes back to what like, we circle back. Music. More appreciated in Europe and Japan. There's still a classical music and a jazz scene in Europe. Yeah, and if you're a jazz musician or a classical musician in America right now, you can't get arrested. Like. Nobody cares. The greatest, I love a guitar player named Jimmy Bruno. He lives in Philadelphia. He is world renowned. If you go to Italy, people stand in line to see Jimmy Bruno. In America, he's got to teach you to college to make ends meet. <laughs> You're talking world class jazz player. I mean, stellar musician. Can't get arrested in America. I keep saying arrested, but you know what I mean? Like, he's just, nobody cares. Okay, to top this. My favorite beer out of six beers was the Unicorn Blood. Yes, that was really good. My favorite beer though, I don't know, that's tough. That Unicorn Blood was really good. I wouldn't have thought a red IPA would, would make me feel as good as it did, because I normally don't go with IPAs, but I think you might be onto something. That was delicious. I want to pick the Cape May, because I love the people at Cape May, they're nice people. That was a really good beer too. I that. A kettle soured IPA hit me all the right ways. It yeah, put an IPA like in my mouth. Too. I'd almost go like 1A and 1B. That's what's good. But you're right. That but who's that company that made that beer? What do we have that here? Yeah, it's right there. Who's that? Pipe something? Pipeworks Brewing Company. Pipeworks Brewing Company. Brewed in Chicago, Illinois. I love that about beer that you're starting to get beers from. That's a good, if there's one good thing that's going on in the craft beer world, you're starting to be able to get more beers across the country that you never would have gotten before. So, you know, you're getting a lot of stuff like that. Like, I have my favorite, I showed you today, yeah, I, we were in uh, Byright over here in whatever that is, Ventnor. They had a cascade, it's called Sang Noir, which, by the way, was one of my Richard picks on the show. I saw it, I grabbed it, I brought it in, they went, oh my God, how do you know about this? And it just looked delicious. And it was. But, you know, five years ago or six years ago, you were getting beers from Oregon. Yeah, like the same thing. We we are we're actually like three hours from from Pennsylvania the, from the Windwich Farms, mm -hmm. and Windwich Farms is one of my favorite restaurants as well. But they are making beer, and okay, probably they're putting a lot of money in the in the advertisement. They put because because even the logos, even the style, it's still just a small small brewery, right? And you can you can buy it here. Now there is a neat trend though going on that I find fascinating. The new trend, if I'm understanding it right, and boy, my beer guys are gonna be all over me, I'm wrong, but is that local brewery mentality again. Like these guys, Tonewood, that are on my head, they're in Oakland, New Jersey, and they just broke into Philly. Mm -hmm. But they're not trying to be a company like Stone. You know what I mean? Stone mm -hmm. is national. Now they've got a, a, another brewery in Virginia, so they can make some fresher beers for this side of the coast. And that's a mm -hmm. national thing. You know, uh, we had uh, Rob Todd from Allagash on, and he's in, and don't quote me, I think it's 42, 46 states, whatever Allagash is in now. They're in a lot of states. Tonewood is serving their local community, or Death of a Fox, or some of these, you know, there's a big thing now, like a small brewery in every town that just serves the locals, just hits the local bars. And the local people come in. Those little, you know, brew pubs or brew, you know, little tap rooms are big now. Yeah, tap houses. Yeah, that's big now. I have, I have a, a really good tap house. Uh, whenever you're gonna come come up to to uh, Harrisburg area, uh, I will take you to to places. Um, I'd love to. If we have time, if you have time. Sure. Because on the weekend I, I do, but uh, there is a place. Uh, I don't have a job, so I have time. 
There's a yeah, because I don't have a job either. If, yeah. I, if you if you like whatever you do, it's not a job; it's a hobby. Right, and then my, my job paid for it. And, and my job is gig work. You know, the next day, who's paying me to do that gig? That's my job. <laughs> but that's what musicians do, right? Audio engineers, musicians, radio people. You know, I have podcast clients, and I play in a band, and I have uh, you know my stuff. Sound gigs, more beer on my shirt. <laughs> you know, whatever. Do you want to say a conclusion of, of this whole conversation? You, how, how did you like it? Like, you ever had anything like like lights and microphone? You, you had the microphone, but camera and... Oh, I, I sent this off. I don't know what to do with myself, with my hands. I don't know where to put the glass. I've spilled it all myself. I don't... How do you do this? I'm so impressed that you have a poise with the camera. I'm well, like as usually, a, as usually well, I'm trying to, to sound smart. <laughs> I, I, just, I, get I, that. Just, I just record everything for like three or four times and I just cut out the best part and uh, I see I, I try to watch myself to not be too dumb right but uh, <laughs> yeah this conversation is not not based on that like in, in when you're doing a vlog you're talking in the camera in the lens so the people can can see you that you're talking to them to right. make make this connection. This was this was like a, a talk to you and somebody else. We we I, I was kind of looking back to the end, so they felt it's like we are in a bar and it's just talk about beers. So uh, yeah, if you want to make a connection with with them to so they can feel your personality, right? You just you just kind of stare back because that's what you do with friends. Do you know a show called Three's Company? No. <laughs> oh, see, I, I I just knew because there's so many old shows from America that end up over there. Uh huh. See, I can't no. make the reference now. That would have been too. Well, you can't make the reference with that. Oh, okay, so so Three's Company had Mr. Roper, and they would be talking like this, and when he'd make a joke, he'd look at the camera and go... Yes. And actually, there are already three SD cards full with you. <laughs> so, do you want to end up this one? Yes, or? I'm going to throw this out. Your savant talent is remembering those things. My savant talent is so much more mundane. I remember gear. Gear. Like, I can tell you, Nico McBrain from Iron Maiden, he plays a drum set. I can tell you every piece of that drum kit. I can tell you every John Bonham drum kit ever. I don't even try. We did it on the air with my old drum teacher. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen him in 10 years and I could have set up his drum set. I knew it so well. I knew every cymbal, every drum head. I know technical things about guitars and basses and... So you could actually go up on a stage before a big, big concert. You can set up everything yep. and they, they're just coming and this is yep. perfect, man. Like a drum tech. Without without trying. I mean that's a savant talent to me. Like I've never sat and tried to memorize Neil Perch drum kits. I just know them. Okay, so memorize the 45 degree lights on the face, and next time you're gonna set up the light. <laughs> well, Alright, if I have to. <laughs> oh I thought God. it was air talent at this point, but if I have to do setup, sure. <laughs> So I had a I had a vlog a couple of months ago about collaborating with people, and so far I really like this. And I did too, man. Hopefully we will we'll meet and talk about bands or, or beer or wine or shots or or liquor. And um, well, if you guys liked it, make sure you're subscribed or leave me a like button in the comment section below. One once I messed it up. And I said, leave me a like button in the comment section below. <laughs> and since then, I'm finishing every single video. Like, leave me a like button in the comment section below. Nice. And that's gonna be my my. That's your thing. What's Don't mind. It's just come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'll give you something. Hello, feller. Okay. All right. What the? What kind of bullshit, fake ass? Weirdo European shit is that? <laughs> oh, I see. You have responsibilities. <laughs> and if you, if you guys liked it, also here of a craft beer planet. Of a craft beer planet. Thank you very much again. Thank and you, brother. See you soon up in Pennsylvania. Yes. Is this enjoyable? Should I should I shoot more things like this or? Should I just go back to vlogs? Because I kind of want both of them, but do you think I should do a new channel for, for this kind of talks or uh, or not? No, nope. just leave me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> leave, me, leave, leave me your opinion in the comments. What do you think? I was going to say, yes, this is perfect. You should do this all the time. But it's a combination. They say if you're talking about fishing, you have to keep it with fishing. And I, I want to go against this. Like, I want my. Guess what? Whatever I like to do. I'm posting it. One of the biggest podcasts in the world. 
uh, is Joe Rogan's podcast, right? Joe Rogan Experience? Yes. They tell you podcast should be under an hour. He runs three fucking hours and he just flips the middle bird. He doesn't care. And he's <laughs> one of the biggest podcasts out there. Screw what people tell you. You got to do what makes you feel good. What you think is the right thing for your course. Okay, course. so if I have to feel good, whenever I will meet with personalities just like James, I will do a podcast or vlog cast just like this. And whenever I'm by myself or just with my friends that you guys already know, I will do my normal vlogs. And thanks for watching and see you guys in my next video. Bye bye. See ya.